Good morning. Welcome to Unity of Lexington. Wherever you are on your spiritual path, you are welcome here. And as we sing often on Sundays, your soul is welcome here. So glad you could join me this morning. Um, yeah, let's begin with a song. And the song that we have to open with this morning is uh, composed by and sung by Ricky Byers. And, oh gosh, Ricky does such wonderful work. Um, the song is called Blessed Always. And the here's the, <clears throat> the basic lyric. It's what they call around. Blessed always, blessed always, for the arms of God surround us. Let our joy be so triumphant that we rest in God and say, Amen. Okay, got it? Let's do it. Well, I think that was a good opening prayer. Would you agree with me? <laughs> oh, my goodness. I love Ricky's stuff. I want to show you my little angel that keeps watch over us each Sunday morning. Uh, she is called Vigil, V-I-G-I-L. So she keeps vigil while we pray and, and study together this morning. She has a candle. And then I have taken a little glass red bird and stuck it in the crook of her arm. <laughs> oh, gosh. Anyway, I just wanted to show it to you. She has a kind of a braid in the back. And the bottom of her dress is all these little gold studs that are just so pretty. So I wanted to show that to you this morning. So she stands behind my candle. And, um, and like the little, uh, like the... The title says she keeps her vigil. Okay, let's get to it. Happy Mother's Day to all you moms out there. Oh, yeah. Exciting. Yeah. All right. I hope you're going to celebrate today the wonderful mother that you are. Um, I certainly am going to later with my daughters. Um, and um, for those of you whose mom has passed on, I know, you know, there's no separation in spirit. And my mom has passed on. And it's, it, it's, it's a challenge to be without them. But you can always send them love. And today during our meditation, we're going to be sending our mothers on whatever plane of existence they are. We're going to be sending them love this morning. So, all right, let's say uh, hello to Peg and Joe Fox. Yes, happy Mother's Day to you too, Peg. It's great. Wonderful. Glad you're with me. All right, I'll try to post them as best I can as we go along. Well, sometimes it gets a little crazy, but anyway. Okay, uh, on announcements, please like our Facebook page and subscribe 
to our YouTube channel as well. Be sure and tell your friends who are not on Facebook that I'm live on YouTube. And you can watch YouTube on the television. I watched my grandson graduate Friday just in living color on my TV, my big TV and on, on the YouTube channel. So it's really great. Um, okay. You may donate to Unity of Lexington by texting to that number that I keep posted each Sunday. Or you can use the link on the Facebook page which says shop on website. That'll take you to where you can donate. Uh, you don't have to be a member of PayPal or you can mail it in. And the mailing address is found under about the heading on our public Facebook page. Okay, let's pray today for these beautiful souls. We pray for peace the world over, especially for the country of UK Ukraine. And we might want to step up our prayer time. Uh, because of the celebration that R Russia is planning to have. Um, I think it's Monday. So, yeah. Um, okay. What can I say other than um, I know God is present in it. I am grateful that there are so many people that got out of that plant that was in Mary, Mary Pole. Uh, so many women and children and elderly. Uh, thank God for that. So we continue to pray for peace the world over, and particularly Ukraine. We continue to pray for all those who are suffering from and have transitioned to COVID. Also, please pray for Nettie, who took a, a really bad fall this past week. But thank you, God, she didn't break anything. Uh, that's the blessing, but she's hurting. Um, pray for Alicia, Nicole, Linda. Uh, we're continuing to pray for Lakota until Carol's horse, Lakota, is out of the woods on that. Judy and Mike, that they find their right and perfect housing. They're looking for their right and perfect home, just as we are in our church. Pray for Liz, Amanda, Malia, Bill, Mac and Susan's fur baby, Shelby, Deborah's fur baby, Maya, Mandy, Linda's Ma Linda and Mac's fur baby, Janet, Steve and his mom, Doris, Diane, Trish, Wendy, daughter, Michelle, and husband who recently had surgery. I think he must be doing really great at this point. Wendy's grandchildren, Madison, Michael, Braden, David, Joshua, and Caleb. Connie and myself for continued healing. Uh, Connie from heart surgery, myself from post-COVID, long-haul COVID, they call it. Pray for all the animal shelters, and of course, please continue to hear, to hold the prayerful vision that we do locate our right and perfect home. And I have placed the affirmation at the top of the page. Thank you, God. We find our right and perfect place to meet each Sunday morning. We are seeking it just as it is seeking us. We are now blessed with our new church home. Yes. Thank you, God. All right, Nancy. Good morning, Nancy. So glad you're with us. Amy, good to see you. Glad you're with us too. And we have another good morning from Nancy. That's okay. Never can have too many. <laughs> All right, girls and boys. If you'd like prayer support, please call me or email me at revcarolunity at gmail.com. I thought at one time they had a link on on one of our pages, either the private page or the public page, where you could just click on it and ask people to pray with you. But I can't find it now, so I don't know what if they've taken it off or what's happened. Um, anyway, I'm glad that you all are with me this morning and we're going to have a good time. <laughs> we are. All right. Now we're going to have our meditation this morning and it's going to be about mothers. And um, because today's Mother's Day, right? It's just the perfect time to do it. Uh, and I hope you enjoy it. It's one that I wrote a long time ago. But like many things, it's timeless. So I hope you enjoy it. So I just invite you to close your outer eyes and take a d nice deep breath. And just... Allow my words of my heart to be the words of your own heart. Yes.
I am at peace. I take a deep breath and I let go and I let God. I let the one presence and one power, one activity find expression in me. I let God. I am at peace. If there is a need for healing in my life, I let it go, for there's only one presence and one power, and that presence and power is life. I am at peace. Nice deep breath. If there's a need for prosperity in my life, I let go. For there's only one source for my good, and that source is God. If there's a need for love and harmony in my life, I let go. I let the one love find full expression in and through me. The one love, the one presence, the one power. And I am at peace. In the sacredness and the holiness of this moment, I bring into my mind's eye and to the forefront of my consciousness, my mother. Whether she's on this physical plane or if she has moved on to another plane, I just see her in my heart and in my mind's eye. And I send forth the love that I am. I send forth the peace that I know to my mom. And in this moment, in this stillness, I send forth my love and my peace to my mother. For some of us, we did not have a nurturing mother, and for some of us, we did not even know our mother. And for other of us, others of us, we had a wonderful, wonderful relationship. No matter the relationship we had upon this earth with our mothers, we must always remember that no matter the kind of relationship that was, they gave us the opening to come to earth as a living soul. And for that, if nothing, if you have nothing else, for that we are grateful that our mothers gave us life, physical life. We are grateful. And for those of us who did have a wonderful relationship with our mothers, we thank them, we bless them. We give back the joy that they gave us upon this earth. For their, their choice was the sole choice to come and give us the opening to be here. They made that choice in love. And we are so grateful. I am at peace. And again, I take another deep breath. I am at peace. For I am one with my mother. I am one with God. I am one. I am one. I send my mother love. And I send love today to those who are acting in the capacity of a mother. There are grandparents raising children. There are aunts and uncles and sisters and brothers raising others' children. There are so many out there who have acted in the capacity of love in our lifetime. And we send them all love today. All of them. Who might not look like mothers, but who have acted in that capacity in our life. Another soul choice that we're grateful for. 
Ah, nice breath. I am at peace. I am at peace. And now as you gently come back to this time and place, remember the sacredness of this moment, the holiness of this place, and your yours and my oneness with God. And we say thank you, thank you, God. So it is. Amen. And amen. Okay, wonderful. I hope you enjoyed that. I, I always look forward to Mother's Day and having that wonderful meditation. And I always like to be sure and include those who don't really look like mothers and really ended up making that soul choice along the way. And they're acting in that capacity, in that loving nurturing capacity as mothers and then of course our own moms we're grateful okay so I told you last week that I thought for sure oh gosh look before I start here's Jeffrey hey Jeffrey how are you your wife's name escapes me but if she's watching I'm greeting your wife too <laughs> <clears throat> yes. All right. Last week, I said that I probably would continue about reality. And yes, I have, because the title of my talk this morning is Let's Get Real About Relationships. And I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> yes. For those of you who aren't in a real, well, we're getting real about important aspects of our lives by bringing a large dose of reality with a capital R to the table, we're bringing a large dose of God to the table. And that's what we're doing this morning. <laughs> All right. For those of you who aren't in a relationship at present, never fear, because today I'm using the term relationship in a much more expansive way for us, because wherever we look, Wherever we turn, wherever we are in this human experience, we are in relation with someone or something, right? You're in relationship with your family, your colleagues and coworkers, your friends, the grocery store people, your maybe even your favorite barista, but other drivers on the road. And perhaps you do have a sacred partner. But most importantly, you're in relationship with yourself and God, the God of your being. So today we're going to get real about what works and what doesn't work to create and sustain genuine and real relationships in all of those areas. That's what we're going to talk about this morning. I hope you enjoy it. Okay. Um, relationship is the most powerful spiritual path that exists in the world today. The greatest tool we have. It can be the most painful at times. It can be the most joyful, but nothing else can take us to the deepest truth quicker and more powerfully than relationship. If we know how to use it, and we're all talking again about all relationship in life, all relationship. So the more we become awake, and the more we become a conscious regarding true relationship, the better choices we can make in our lives. The invitation is to realize that relationships are accurate mirrors for the different aspects of ourselves. And there's really only one relationship that's the most important foundation for all other relationships. And when this relationship works, all other relationships work. And when this one doesn't work, None of the rest of them do either. And that relationship is with God and self, the God self. It's the only real relationship we have with life. It does not work if we emphasize making relationships outside of ourselves work. Unless we see them for what they are, mirrors of the inner process, we will take the error 
E-R-R-O-R-R, error, the, you could call it wrong, I guess, the, the error path, the mistaken path, that's a better word, of victimization, powerlessness, and separation. Some of the best guidance I have ever received regarding relationship is found in the writings of Myrtle Fillmore. She's the co-founder of the Unity Movement. And so I have her book here today. Uh, Myrtle Fillmore Healing Letters. Yeah. This book is filled with responses to letters that she received. They don't publish the letters as they were written because I guess they don't have them, uh, copies of them, but they do post her responses. So you can really intimate what the question was that she's answering to. And she did a lot of writing to her followers in the early days. And here's what she says. And this is the chapter called To Truth Teachers. And we're all truth teachers, aren't we? We teach by example, right? We teach in so many ways. All right. Now, now follow me on this because it's really, it's really, really profound what she says about it. The closer we are associated as people, as souls, as friends, whatever, the more we invite from one another the shortcomings that exist in us. And that must be brought to the surface, she says, must be recognized and made to measure up to the, I would call it the higher standard. standard. She calls it the Christ standard. It's okay, but you know what she's saying. The advantage of groups of true students, that's us, <laughs> being so closely associated is that they form the habit of constantly reminding one another of the unfailing law and unchanging principle. Now, really what she's saying there is that when somebody pushes your buttons, that's a call to the higher order. That's a call to the higher self. That's what she's saying. And I totally, totally agree with her. Do you all agree with her? I mean, honestly, I totally agree with her. Okay. Okay. I had a little something fall on there, a little note. I share with you this morning three fallacies regarding relationships. One, if we could just be involved with someone, our sense of aloneness and isolation would vanish as if by magic. Being in a relationship will not cure loneliness. It will not. Number two, being in a relationship will cure our sense of brokenness, better known as the Humpty Dumpty approach, to love. Nobody can fix you except yourself and your trust in God, you know, coupled with your trust in God. Number three, being in a relationship will guarantee happiness. Yeah, that's why we have so many divorces, right? Oh, <laughs> grief. Okay, we cannot create what doesn't already exist in our consciousness. I've always said you, you cannot give away what you don't have. We must build a solid foundation within ourselves on which we grow, on which to grow a relationship. Now, those are three common fallacies, and I've, I know this. Uh, it's not news to me. I'm sure it's not to you either. Now, has anyone ever been hurt at some time in their life by love? You don't need to hold your hand up because I can't see it. <laughs> but how many out there, you might could send me a hand in the chat column. <laughs> how many out there have had their hearts broken? I'd be one, okay? And it starts really young, doesn't it? In kindergarten, there were, everybody pretty much brought valentines and yet some of those in that classroom were left out of love have you ever been left out of love i have i would guess every one of us has experienced the pain of lost love missed love being left out of love it's a common common experience 
There's an old song from a Broadway musical many years ago, and I love the lyric. John's in love with Jane. Jane's in love with Jim. And Jim's in love with someone who's not in love with him. <laughs> How many of you have ever been Jim? Well, again, I have. The pain of a lost love is so very great, even if it's a business partnership gone wrong. One you had such high hopes for, a friendship, a marriage, a broken marriage, of a love that never quite made it to the commitment stage. I say this to you this morning. The pain of a lost love is so great in us because the promise of love is so profoundly ingrained in us. Can I say that again? If y'all bear with me repeating that. The pain of a lost love is so great in us because the promise of love is so profoundly ingrained in us. The promise of love. We're made. Our DNA has the promise of love in it. Our spiritual DNA. The promise of love is profoundly encoded in it. Because in spite of all these instances of unrequited love, we are hardwired for relationship and we are born and created to have relationships. Now, what is the universe if not a series of relationships happening right now? The whole universe is in relationship. Look at the cosmos. Look at the solar system. You have the sun as the nucleus and the planets orbiting around us as the atomic structure of protons and neutrons orbiting. Every cell in our bodies is in a relationship. And the energy that moves those components in relationship is love. The spiritual energy that moves all those components in relationship is love. The dance of life is happening because of divine love and pure intelligence at work in this universe. Now, our motivation to enter into relationship with a person, a system, a community, a society, a village, a church, whatever it is, our motive is that we can co-create together something we cannot do alone. We tithed recently two times to Ukraine and we tithed to a family in need. Now, I could have made a personal contribution, but I could not have tithed $4,000 to that mother and son in need. I could not have tithed over $400 to Ukraine myself. But we were able to do that because we had divine love binding us together to do things greater, greater than just of ourselves. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. That's why we do church. That's why we do family. To create something we cannot do alone that is greater than the sum of its parts. That's right. In our sacred scripture, it's written that Jesus was standing outside and his mothers and brothers or it was inside and his mothers and brothers were standing outside waiting patiently uh, outside the synagogue. And finally, they sent someone in to interrupt Jesus and tell him they were needing to meet with him. He said to the messenger, who is my mother and who are my brothers? Looked all around him as he gestured toward the disciples that surrounded him. Here are my mother and my brothers. In other words, here's my family. Here are all those I'm in relationship with, not just my biological family, not just my family of origin. We are children of the world. We are children of the universe. We are children of God. And we are in relationship with everyone and everything. Um, I'll share with you what Charles Fillmore said. He he writes very, uh, I, I don't think artistically is the right word, but uh, lyrically almost. But he, he's, he, of course, he wrote in the late 1800s. This is how they talked then, okay? He gave us a pretty powerful formula. And again, Charles Fillmore is the co-founder of our beloved unity movement. He wrote, God is love 
and to live in God mind, one must cultivate love until it becomes the keynote of their life. We must love everybody and everything, ourselves included. Wow, that's a tall order. We must love everybody and everything. That's a tall order. Not easy. Some people hate themselves. Self-hate is destructive, he writes. You must love yourself. Affirm the infinite love as your love. And you will find that there will be generated in your mind and body an entirely new element. Love is the magnet. You must have love. You cannot live without it. Then begin to live in the thought of love. Personal love is part of the infinite law, but divine love fulfills the law. Now, now he's saying that because divine love accepts everyone, leaves no one out. That's why he's saying that. He's saying personal love is part of it, but divine love, we love everyone. We love the entire universe as God's creation. Center your love thoughts upon God and you will find love for your fellow beings growing marvelously. Wow. Yeah, I'd like to have I'd like to have things growing marvel marvelously. <laughs> Wouldn't you? I'm doing this because this is bothering me. <laughs> it's kind of like whatever. Okay. Uh, love is the magnet. So love is what relationships must be about. Marianne Williamson wrote in her book, A Return to Love. Love takes more than crystals and rainbows. It takes discipline and practice. It's not just a sweet sentiment from a Hallmark card. It's a radical commitment to a different way of being. A response to life that is completely at odds with the rest of the world. Now, I would add to that. I would say it can be at odds with the rest of the world. It's not always completely at odds in my belief. I suggest to you that if you wish to get real about relationships and about love within those relationships, and if you wish to take all your relationships to a higher more holy and sacred level, then consider this major facet of love this morning. And that is compassion. Compassion. When we tithe to Ukraine, we tithe out of the compassion of our heart. When we tithe to Judy and Mike, the mom and son in need, we tithe to them out of our heart. We had compassion for them. We had compassion for Judy and Mike. We had compassion for all those children. So bring compassion to the table. So what does compassion look like in relationships? What does it mean to be compassionate in relationships? Well, I've, 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 I've listed some of the ways that I hope you agree with. Being compassionate means to listen without judgment, without analyzing, or without trying to fix. With me as a nurse, that's hard to do. I want to fix people. It took me forever to realize that my listening and my open heart was more important than me trying to help fix them. And that's a step up. I went higher in my thinking about helping people that were in pain or listening, not helping, but well, it is helping, but I'm, oh, well, being compassionate means to listen without judgment, without analyzing or without trying to fix. Being compassionate means asking, how can I understand you better? How can I understand this better? Being compassionate means to look at every act of another human being. I didn't say some acts. I said every act and that's, really a challenge without being well looking and list sorry being compassionate means to look at every act of another human being as a call for love however twisted it might seem that soul is calling out for love being compassionate also means having an understanding and empathy for another person's feelings and experience and offering whatever help you can, right? 
I'll share with you this morning an extreme cat example of compassion. I'm probably going to go over a little bit today, so I hope you all practice forgiveness for me. It was reported in a newspaper some years ago. It's, it's entitled, A Lesson Learned on a Bus in Kenya. It told of a bus containing Christians and Muslims just outside of a Kenyan city, which was traveling at Christmas time, and terrorists forced it to stop. More than 10 heavily armed militants of the Somali-based Al-Shabaab group ordered the passengers to get out and form into groups. Muslims on one side and everyone else on the other. Their plan was clear because in several previous attacks, members of this terrorist group had slaughtered unarmed Christians and spared Muslims. Despite knowing this pattern, and being ordered to separate, the Muslim passengers refused to separate themselves from their non-Muslim fellow passengers. In fact, some even offered headscarves to the Christians. One of the Muslim passengers said, we stuck together tightly. The militants threatened to shoot us, but we still refused and protected our brothers and sisters. Now here comes the miracle. Ultimately, the militants gave up and left. The article ended with these lines. In the face of death, they saw each other first as human beings. That's a lesson worth remembering. They didn't see each other as Christians and Muslims. They saw each other, I would say, as souls. Oh, my goodness. Compassion personified. Thankfully, I would say virtually all of us won't be asked to have compassion at that level, at the level of those gentle Muslims in Kenya. But how might we bring more compassion to our fellow travelers and to our experience? This is a question worth pondering. Compassion combined with kindness is one way in which we can bring love to our relationships and have them be real at a deep level. Mother Teresa said, be the living expression of God's kindness, kindness in your face, kindness in your smile, kindness in your warm greeting. So here are the ways of expressing compassion and kindness, a kind, soft word, a helping hand, a smile to a stranger, giving an anonymous gift, picking up trash somewhere one I do often, helping someone with their groceries, paying for the person behind you at the drive through There are so many endless ways in which to express compassion and kindness. However, sometimes it's easier to show strangers those acts of compassion and kindness than it is to show our loved ones. <laughs> Lucy from Charlie Brown said, I love ma mankind, but it's people I can't stand. <laughs> oh, Lucy, I love you. I got a Lucy in me. <laughs> okay, closing this morning, tongue in cheek, I'm going to share with you girls. Sorry, guys. Okay, the five secrets to a great relationship. And you'll understand why uh, uh, I'm kind of leaving you guys out right now. Okay. Okay. Now, you probably could say the same thing for women, but anyway, it is important to find a man who works around the house, occasionally cooks and cleans, and who has a job. It's important to find a man who is dependable and doesn't lie. It's important to find a man who makes you laugh. It's important to find a man who's good in bed and loves to make love to you. <laughs> it's important that these four men never meet. <laughs> I couldn't resist. <laughs> and like I say, this could apply this could apply to the women too. <laughs> Try not to laugh because it makes me cough. But anywho, guys, I've really enjoyed being with you this morning. Uh good morning, Steve. Yes, finally you got here. I'm glad. I'm glad for that. Okay, and I, I'm not sure I included Wendy. I, I hope I did. Happy Mother's Day to you too, Wendy. 
All right, we're ready to wrap things up. And again, I'm going to bring, if I can find it, um, that wonderful video uh, from Jamie Luma singing the peace song, because I just love it so much. It's just really awesome. Um, let's go back here a minute. Come in, so. All right, now we're going to go to banners. So people were telling me that sometimes, I'm sorry, brand. Okay. People, were, some people were telling me that when I post people's names and things that it takes up the whole screen. So that's why I don't leave it on for very long because I don't want their whole screen to be taken up. You know, I want to say hi, but I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Jamie's going to sing us out. Uh, first, we're going to say the prayer for protection. Okay. Okay. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. And wherever we are, God is and all is well. Thank you, God. And so it is. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the week. And again, happy Mother's Day to all you moms out there. Celebrate who you are today. Happy Mother's Day to all those of you who are acting in the capacity of a mother today. Celebrate your nurturing love today. Okay? Here's Jane. Notice that up here is a mad face. So I don't know what that mad face is about. <laughs> Peg Fox, why are you sending me a mad face? I don't know. <laughs> Goodness sakes. <laughs> okay. Well, I hope you guys have a really wonderful rest of the week and um, take care. I love you dearly. Don't know what I'll be talking about next week, but um, week after next, we're going to have Reverend Bobby. So, all right. Love you guys. I'm sending you lots of love and big hugs. Take care. <laughs>